Hey! 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 Hello and welcome to another bit of JavaScript this way! Uh, thank you very much for nice uh, and we have the link for the job and offer and Vlad for making the lectures and Noga for organizing the, the event. First, thank you for introduction and uh, I'll not keep you waiting. Obviously, you are dying to see visualization in uh, HTML, HTML and uh, JavaScript. So a couple of words about uh, NICE. Some numbers. So we are 5,000 uh, employees, uh, more than 35 uh, locations, uh, more than 25,000 uh, customers, and we are 30 years old, but we are still young and uh, actually using state-of-the-art technology, so I will talk a little bit about it. We are a global company. Is number of locations. Our development centers are located in Israel, one, uh, our biggest developer locations. We have uh, in India, and we have uh, three locations in the United States, in uh, Richardson, uh, Salt Lake City, and uh, Atlanta. Couple of, uh, sorry, couple of words about the project, one of the projects that we are developing. This is actually the new project. Uh, it's actually one of the projects that I am personally very involved, developing a pure cloud, native cloud, uh, contact center uh, software. So contact centers, uh, probably you know when you're calling to bank or to any organization to have a service or to buy something, your call is recorded. And obviously, the actual agents that are handling the calls, there are a lot of software to manage this interaction, from routing, from telephony part, if it's voice call or chat session, and uh, obviously recording, capturing this interaction. This is where we as a company started. But uh, actually around it is also some management application, like workforce management and quality management, and of course analytics, what customers are saying, what actually is the trends, what is the problem, and how actually customers receiving their service. So until now, such kind of solutions, it's where very big, on-prem solutions with a lot of hardware, uh, telephony boxes, uh, uh, servers. We had deployments with hundreds of servers with larger banks. And what we are doing now, it's actually one of the uh, most innovative projects in this, uh, in, in this uh, area. It's pure software as a service, like Salesforce or other technology. Actually, when company want to open contact center or want to move to another technology or introduce analytics, they can just buy it with credit card and have up and running without any hardware, without any installation. So it's a pure cloud. It's not moving existing system to the cloud virtual machine. It's native. Uh, all uh, uh, state-of-the-art technology like dockers, uh, microservices, uh, serverless. Uh, so it's uh, the project we are working on. And so obviously, it's pure web. And front end is JavaScript. And I will talk a little bit about challenges that we have in developing this project. So our technology stack, as I mentioned, it's uh, nice used to have a .NET shop. But currently, it's with all new projects, we're pure open source. So it's uh, Java and uh, Python. So actually, we're moving away from uh, .NET and into this, this space. So using, as you can see on this slide, I will not go through the, through the technologies, but it's uh, JavaScript and Docker, as I mentioned before. So it's about the challenge. So the projects that we're developing, this pure cloud uh, contact center software, it's about 250 developers. As you can imagine, anybody from you who is working on a big uh, HTML5 uh, project, even when you have five or ten developers after six months of development, it uh, became very hard to be in control of what actually happens there, and especially if you want to introduce some additional technology. And as you know, in this space, almost every six months, a new shiny new thing, like Ang Angular 1.5, 1.6, Angular 2, React. Uh, so the frameworks are changing all the time. And when you have such large the uh, number of developers and large code base. So for example, like this project, it's 250 developers, three different locations. As I mentioned before, India, Israel, United States. It's very hard to move and to be agile, to introduce some technology. When you're starting, there was Angular 1.5, then as mentioned before, 1.6. But now, how we can introduce new technologies without actually redoing everything from scratch, and we cannot change it in such a large project. So the solution, so the challenge that I mentioned, how we can remove dependency in such large single page application, how to be still agile, like to be able to iterate and introduce new stuff 
quickly. So the solution was, it's actually to use Microspa. So exactly like we have microservices. So main idea to have self-independent teams that they will own the code that they develop and run and to be agile and to be able to move uh, quickly. We're doing the same also with our front end. So it's not instead of one big, and I will show you some screenshot, one big uh, single page application, we divided it by personas, by use cases, who is using this application. If it's contact center manager, or it's supervisor, or it's agent, by sub applications. And on the top level menu, we're actually changing, actually reloading the page when somebody m navigates in the menu. So from user experience, it's actually almost seamless because uh, when he's still working in specific space, the no page uh, uh, reloads. So it's a spa experience. But if he wants to move to some another view or some another task, then we will can reload the page. And obviously, it solves all this issue with multiple frameworks. V one team can develop with different frameworks as other part of application, memory reload. As you know, it's always a good idea sometimes if it's large application to reload the page to free some memory, and it's actually improves the performance. By the way, if you have any questions, please feel free. OK. Uh, some screenshot of the application. So I will not go into, into details. So it's very graphic, graphical application with a lot of uh, uh, dynamic uh, pages and visualizations. So it's very interactive application. As I mentioned before, it's hundreds of developers who is working on this part of, of JavaScript. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. I'm uh, super excited to do this talk because it's my favorite talk. Um, and the talk title is Websites are Video Games Waiting to Happen. So, Adobe, Adobe software. Has any of you ever used it? Photoshop, Illustrator, yeah, hands. Two people use this. Okay, more than two people. Perfect. So I don't have to explain what Adobe is. So Adobe uh, does uh, creative software, software that allows people to make creative things. Um, so they must be creative themselves, right? So let's take a look, let's take our time machine back 20 years ago in the past. Um, and this was the Adobe homepage 20 years ago on October 25th, 1996. And it's a really pretty homepage. You can see that um, you can, uh, they, they have answers, that's important. Um, what? Probably not. But, it, uh, but Netscape uh, 3.1, uh, the question was, uh, does it work on IE5? probably works on Netscape Navigator 3.1. Okay, so by the way, this is the entire homepage. So that was the size of uh, resolutions back then. And you can download Acrobat Reader or whatever. But let's move time forward 20 years ago, uh, 20 years to the future. Um, and le let's see how the Adobe homepage looks today. And it looks kind of like this. So it's nicer, right? The images are more vivid, and uh, there's a clear message, and like the graphics are better, the resolution is better. But um, it's not, it's like something you'd see in a print magazine. There's nothing inherently interactive about this, uh, this website. Let's compare it with a game. So this is a game from 20 years ago. It's called Tomb Raider by uh, Core Design. And in this section, you have uh, your main character, Lara Croft, and she rides a tomb or something and uh, escapes from a giant pixelated daggers and it's all very dramatic but uh games have come a long way in 20 years so let's compare this little experience that you just saw to a game from these days this is tomb raider uh rise of tomb raider by crystal dynamics from 2016 and obviously it looks a lot better so yeah, the graphics are better, but that's not the only thing that changed here. As you'll see, uh, it's much more cinematic. So the sound, the camera angles, the storytelling, uh, all of it has taken a really large, really big step. Um, and you, as, a, as a player here, you feel much more connected to what you're seeing. So what's, what's different? And it's not just the technology. What has been different from 20 years ago to now in video games? And uh, the answer is juice. Wait, <laughs> what do you mean by juice? So juice is a game term uh, or a game design term uh, that kind of explains the emotional connection between a player and the game. 
So it's not about the game mechanic, it's not about what do you actually do if you press left and right or you shoot or whatever. It's about how does the game make you feel? What is your emotion and connection to the game? There are two game designers which I really like, uh, Martin Jonathan and Petri Pujo, and that's probably not how you say their names, but whatever. Um, and they say, juice is typically auditory or visual. It's about maximum output for minimum input. So essentially, a juicier game is a game that has much more connection and much more oomph to it, and it just feels a lot nicer. Juice is about taking a simple game like Breakout, which looks like this, and turning it from this to this. And eventually, uh, it becomes something like uh, this. I like how, how it gets worried as the, the world, world goes up. OK, so that's what we're talking about today about juice. Uh, my name is Offer. I'm a creative developer at a company called Echo. Uh, what is a creative developer? Uh, it's a normal developer, but I feel more superior about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, it's just that um, I do also design, programming, and everything in between. So um, it, it's kind of like testing all the different connection points of these two fields. And today, I'm going to show you five new ways to juice up uh, your website. Um, but we have to start for somewhere. So that somewhere is a free open source bootstrap theme, which looks like this. So it's a normal bootstrap theme, and we're going to apply all sorts of juicy things to make it look juicier. OK. So the first thing we're going to talk about is ambient animations. What are ambient animations? Ambient animations are animations that happen in the background um, and give a sense of location or a sense of atmosphere to the experience that your, that your user, your player, will see. Let's take a look at some examples from games. So the first example is from a game called Mirror's Edge. And just before the first, uh, the first uh, menu, the main menu, you have this sense of the city, this aesthetic, this cleanliness that this game uh, is all about. And even if, as you progress to the actual main menu, you can see that the same, um, same atmosphere remains. So you get a sense of your, where you are, where you're looking at an interactive thing and not a static page. Contrast this to the first uh, menu of World of Warcraft. This is the login screen. So it's much more dynamic. It's not a subtle. But again, you kind of understand where you are, what is this thing you're seeing. Uh, this is a game called Rocket League about cars playing soccer. Um, and obviously you have confetti, you have grass, you have your a wizard hat on your car, uh, and that again gives you the tone of the experience that you're seeing. Let's look, take a look at how can this be implemented in a website. So, uh, this is, oh, I'm not sure if you can see on this screen, but there is this really subtle ocean animation going on in the background. Um, that gives a calm, uh, calm atmosphere to this page. Um, the, atm the animation doesn't always have to be video. This is some animation that happens only on part of the page. The tree and the flickering uh, screen gives you the sense of uh, kind of the atmosphere where you're looking at. And if you have more budget or whatever, um, and you have a side about yachts, then why not put yachts in or Put airplanes, I don't care. Like If you have the money, go ahead and do it. Um, so it's all, it's all up to you how to implement this. Let's take a look at how this looks in our theme. OK, so this is the, uh, our home page. And let's turn, out, turn on the animations. Yay, now like we have, you're looking at something that's not static. We're looking at something that's not that's more interactive. Cool. Um, by the way, there are websites that use video on the background, but it's not all about video. It's about the feel of your experience. So, ambient animations uh, make your experience look dynamic rather than stale. And how do you actually implement this? You have you can just use a plain video tag, video HTML tag, 
and put something on top of it. It's that simple. Moving on. Particles. Questions. There was a question about support for video, but we'll answer questions at the end. <laughs> so, particles. What are particles? Particles are uh, tiny, they don't have to be tiny, but they are numerable objects that are animated across the, across the page using a particle system. Um, what do I mean by that? Let's see, because it's easier to understand when, when you're seeing it, not when I'm explaining it. So I'm going to show you uh, a video from a game I personally really like. It's called Hearthstone by Blizzard Entertainment. If ever you, any of you ever played it? <coughs> yeah, we have two people, Hearthstone players, cool. Um, so this is a collectible card playing game, and I'm going to show you a video where a user opens a new pack of cards. And it looks kind of like this. <laughs> This is uh, like fast, uh, fast motion audio. It's cool. So let's see it in slow motion. So if you have the lights going on in the background, and as the card pack opens up, you have lights coming out. You have more light smokes coming out. Uh, you have the breeze from the package. You have small petals coming out. And as the user uh, goes over the different cards, uh, you have these smoky things coming out of it. And it really gives a sense of magical to this kind of a boring and mundane task, just like opening something up, um, which is pretty cool. Let's take a look at the particles in a website. And there aren't many examples of this, but I found a few. So this is a really subtle example of some particles in a website. And uh, there is this article from the Huffington Post where they use particles to show a likeness. And then later on, uh, they use particles to show a map, which is pretty cool as it's part of the actual article um, and uses to actually emphasize something. Uh, going back to our template, uh, we can see we have our callback button here. It's nice, nothing too interesting, nothing too fancy. But what if we turned on the particles? You ready for this? OK. <laughs> so uh, now the button is much more magical, right? And if you go over it, look, it's even more magical. I mean, you can't go wrong with more particles. Just add more particles. <laughs> it solves everything. Uh, but it gives this interesting, an interesting feel to an otherwise kind of boring button. OK. So particles add a sense of magic and mystery uh, to your app site. And they're efficient solution because you don't have to animate every single particle, every single one of these things. There's a system that does it for you and you just kind of decide on how you want it to look. Um, and how do you use it? So there's a, there are several particle libraries, but this is a really nice particle library called Proton. And what I like about it is that you have really good examples of how to use it. And you can just kind of uh, look at the examples and they're mesmerizing. Um, you could just waste an uh, entire day looking at it. And they have some really stupid examples, which I really like. But the blood here is particles, which is cool. Um, and if you like a lot of squirrels or whatever that is. <laughs> OK, yeah, let's get back on track. Um, next, camera movement. So what is camera movement in the context of websites? So you kind of understand what is camera movement in the context of shows, TV, movies. Um, there's a camera and you move it, right? <laughs> but in websites or games, it's kind of different. Well, in a, in a game, you have your world, you have your character, you have items, you have everything that's happening in the world. And there's if you see it, then you see it through something. What is this something? It's a virtual camera that the, uh, that the game designer, the game programmer, put in there just so that you can experience and experience the, the, the thing. Um, and just by using the same techniques from video, you can use the same techniques for a uh, website to do some actually cool things. So let's see it. Uh, one particular example, which is screen shake, uh, that is really common in TV and movies. Let's see it in, uh, used in games. So obviously, uh, if you're shooting rockets and towers are falling down, 
then something really significant is going on. And you see how like, there is blurriness and a screen shake and how they add to this effect. But it's not just about explosions and action. It's also about, like, you see how this 2D car jumps around. Um, or even m more abstract, this game about blowing up circles with a little rectangle. Look how it feels, how juicy it is to blow up this cir these circles just by this little uh, camera shake uh, effect. <laughs> this is an example from a website that moves the camera by going from uh, over, over, over the water level to below the water level, and there are some even particles going on in there. Um, this is from the Seattle Space Needle, and they use camera movement to illustrate the sense of location of the Seattle and height of the Seattle Space Needle, which is pretty cool. It's like a scrolling animation that also changes where you're looking at with smart parallax animation. Um, this website uses horizontal scrolling to show you the scale of the solar system. So you can see the size of the sun or the size of the earth and then compare it to size of sizes of other things. But you can also kind of understand the vast distances of the solar system all via scrolling until you break your scroll, uh, mouse scroll picky. Um, and lastly, there is this uh, New York Times article where about scaling a mountain and they use uh, 3D camera movement to show where where exactly the team that scaled the mountain where they went as you read the article, which is pretty cool. So let's go back to our template. Um, and how do you use this in a like simple WordPress template, uh, Bootstrap template? So let's see. We have our contact button down here, and like if you move here, that's nice. Like you can scroll down. Not too interesting, but what if we uh, created, added some camera movements? We want to add some sense of weight to this scrolling action. So now when you scroll, okay. Okay, so. Thumb. Uh, camera movement adds realism and drama to user actions. And it also helped convey meaningful actions or serve as a reward for user action. How was this implemented in, uh, in my example? It was just a s matter of simple CSS animation. Cool. Let's move on to physics. So what are physics? Well, you know what physics are, but what are physics in the context of uh, computer games or video games? So physic physical based games are games where you have a predetermined system, a physical system, which is used in conjunction with the game mechanic to allow the player to achieve some sort of goal. What did I just say? Let's take a look at an example. So there's a game you all know and love. Um, Angry Birds, where you're tasked with saving eggs from pigs by destroying buildings or something like that. Um, that's a physics-based game. And another game which I also personally like is Kerbal Space Program, in which your task is to build rocket ships. But you're not a rocket scientist, so you can't build rocket ships. <laughs> and it usually doesn't work out the way you wanted it to. Um, but it's still fun, even though like, it's really, really hard, and most of the time you're not really good at it. Uh, the YouTube is full of videos failing at doing this. Um, <laughs> and it's cool. Why is it cool? Because, well, in physics, if, you want, if you're you throwing a rock somewhere and you throw it 10 times, then 10, time, 10, out of 10 out of 10 times, different things will happen. You will not have the same result every time you do it. So it it's, it's creates something interesting and exciting. Let's take a look at two exam really cool examples from websites. There aren't a lot of websites using physics. Uh, which is a good thing because it means that you can do it and you be especially unique and everyone will love you. I will love you, but like at least you have that. Um, so this is a, a French design agency, and what I like about their website, other than the fact that it's adorable, is that you have this thing in the menu here that you can play with, 
and it's a physics-based simulation. And it's, you know, it's kind of stupid, but I love it because it's like it, this, there's this extra sense of magic to this thing because it acts like in a, a super physical way. If you do it fast or if you do it slow, like it affects it. Um, okay, so this one is about a, mo uh, a website for a movie called Swiss Army Man by two uh, really talented uh, filmmakers called the Daniels and it stars Harry Potter. Um, and they use physics in their front page um, to play around with And you think this is cool, but, but like it doesn't end here. You can like Wait, what's supposed to happen? Okay, type canteen. Can you can type all kinds of stuff in here. I haven't found everything that you can type. Wait, what is that? And the cool thing here is that like you can just play with everything, and uh, and if if you want to start over, you just like take take Mr. Potter here, and you throw him off the screen, and then you get a new. Come on, come on, here you got a new one. Uh, cool, right? So. That was that looked like it's something that's pretty hard to make. So what we can what can we do with uh, our uh, not this one, not this one, this one? What can we do with our little bootstrap template? Um, so like you know these contact forms where if you put something, if you put your email and it's wrong, you get an email validation error. So you get this ugly red thing. Okay, but what if we turn on the physics. See where I'm going with this, with this, right? Okay, so now, if I put something in here and I break the form, what if I literally broke the form? <laughs> <laughs> and I can still put my name in here. And it comes, like, we don't want to break it forever, so it'll come back together. Okay, so physics, that's cool. Um, Okay, so, physics, I said, Ew. physics killed my computer. That's one of the occupational hazards with physics. It's so the comment here was that in the physics departments they had a rule where every time you wanted to show something in class it didn't work, um, and that's true for any uh, re any uh, talk that you ever give ever nothing ever works. The fact that you were able to see what you just saw that's uh, in ama amazing in its own behalf. Exactly, it's uh, even okay. You are here. Okay, we were back. Let's go back. So, physics. They add a sense of fun and excitement, right? How fun was it when my talk entirely broke down? Um, it y lets users experiment, like you saw. I can do different things, and every user would do a different thing, and they all will get different results within the system that you uh, predefined. And again, as a system that's familiar from real life, you know how physics work in real life. So there's a, an, a tangible connection to how your site operates. Um, so how was this implemented? Uh, using a library called matter.js. Um, and I need to click it in the right window. It's also an interesting library and you can kind of play with things here and tie them to, to different elements and Oh, they all, all have really good doc documentation that you can try. And now we are at our last but not least uh, element, which is interactive video. 
So what's interactive video? Um, it come, it's a form of storytelling that comes from uh, the nature of games to be story-driven mediums. So most of the games you play have an actual story there. There's a character that you follow. There's a script that's written in there. Um, and an example that really shows it nicely is, uh, is from a series of games by a company called Telltale. And I'll show you a small bit <laughs> of... Uh, oh, and... So this is a and game from a uh, part, a game called Game of Thrones. Oh, what's this How awful flicker further? there? Well, it's right over and there. the idea here is that you see the game, um, you see the story as an un unfold, and some, sometimes during this, uh, this story, you have Take choices to make. And the choices that you make, make you this uh, game interactive and affect the story that you're seeing. night for a wedding. Not often he finds a willing husband for one of his daughters. Don't expect me to carry it for you, Sir Garrett. What? What's wrong? Into you. So here the player has a choice. Nothing I'm fine or we have enough wine. You've had too much wine. We need to get back. Or the now, third choice that he picked. Wait. No, and according understand. to the choice that the player makes, <laughs> uh, the, the plot advances. What's wrong with him? Something the matter? Owen, we have to go. You go if you're in such a rush. You can either warn Lords Forrester or save Bowen. <coughs> it's an uppercase. What about? What the hell was that about? Slow down, would you? What's the rush? Okay. Still need a fuck. So we can take this um, and use the same thing for our web video. Um, let's take a look at the, how that happens. Oh snap! Not you. So let's do, let's do this interactively. I'm going to show you a video, uh, and at a certain time, uh, a choice will come up, and we'll pick together what would be the choice. So you'll see a choice comes up, and then you have to yell your choice. And whoever yells the loudest, I will pick his choice. Okay, let's try and do that. Check it out. Sorry. Oh my God, Jill! Oh my God! Wow, it's it's you. That moment when you vaguely remember someone that totally knows you. Help Jill remember just when and where they hung out and what his fucking name is. It's been a minute, Jill. How are you? Oh, I'm really good. Yeah. And how are you? Tell me anything, everything. Oh, you know me. Just same old me. Except, you know. You notice anything different about me? Um, One little okay, choose. Hat, scarf, pen? Yes. Yell. I... It's like a unique different thing. Yes, it's your pin. Yes. Yes, you finally graduated Thanks from college. Done. I did. Oh, I mean, it wow. took me long enough. Nine <gasps> year plan. Man, you must <laughs> be in so much debt. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember the first time I told you I wanted to be an animal chiropractor? Oh, uh, duh, I remember. It was uh, when we... Yell when there's a choice. Oh, we, um, we went to the... Okay, another choice. Um, um, Beach, okay. You got the most boring choices. Oh, I remember. <laughs> It was from when we went swimming at the beach. Yes, that's yes. right! Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Honestly, for a second, I thought you didn't even recognize me. I'm honestly surprised you, you didn't you choose that? when to swim in the church. <laughs> that's... <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Crazy, right? <laughs> so. Um... Interactive video allows viewers to shape the story, which is pretty cool. What you just saw is something that I do at my J-Dub. J -dub. J -dub. 
day job. I work. <laughs> J-Dob. That sounds like a startup. Uh, OK, and how do you implement this? So a small plug here, um, because this is a website I built. And I'm, wait, blah, 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 blah. This is a website I built that allows people to do interactive videos themselves, which is pretty cool. It's developer.helloecho.com. OK, so I showed you a lot of good things and interesting things, but are they even good for th something? So first, I just want to say that the uh, template you just saw is like super exaggerated. I would never in my life build a website that like th all does all those things because it's super annoying for users. But it was just a, a mechanism to show you what the options that you can make and you can do. So what is this thing you've been going for? So first, it's good for fun because it's fun to make. It's really fun to make. And second, it's fun for your users because they are seeing something special and interactive and unique. And you're, if you're having fun as a developer and they're having fun then, and everyone's having fun, then great, why not? Second, uh, it's great for engagement. So your users are much more engaged with your content, whatever it is that you're doing on your site, if they have more to interact with, naturally. Um, and third, it's awesome for user retention. So if you have more interesting things to do, then people are more likely to come back, which will make the money people really happy about this. Um, but I have to warn you that with great power comes great cliches. And while I showed you how to do many, many cool things, uh, it doesn't mean that you have to do all of them. Don't do all of them, OK? Don't. Uh, here, I said it. So pick and choose what works for your experience, uh, for your product, for your website. Pick something that works with the story you're trying to tell. Um, and then everyone will find it great. And then show me, because uh, I like those things. So thank you. I was offer. I <laughs> you can find me on Twitter and our GitHub and on my website and pretty much every place on the internet that has a username and a password. Do um, you have any questions or more applause? <laughs> yeah, one question. So the question was about the technique of making interactive movies that I, you have to film all the choices. So if you want to show something, yeah, you have to film it. Um, but uh, the, the, this technology allows you to, to stitch them all together in a way that allows you to make these choices. And it doesn't have to be even film. You can do something with motion graphics, After Effects, or whatever. As long as, as the medium is video, you can do, use that. Yeah, so uh, Shai asked about HTML5 video support. And HTML5 video is uh, supported in all modern browsers, and it's also supported in mobile, but in mobile, uh, you can't autoplay uh, videos, uh, which is a good thing for users who you don't want to annoy, uh, and a bad thing for advertisers whose job is to annoy users. <laughs> yeah, question. So, so the question was that the uh, the physics part looks and the what? Sorry, oh, the the particles examples look like uh, canvas animations. So, do you have to use uh, canvas? So, uh, you don't have to use canvas. In the example that I showed from the website, that in the template, I'm animating DOM elements like you saw. So, you can use whatever you want. You can use CSS. You can use canvas. Uh, both have pros and cons. You can come to me and we'll talk about those after. But uh, again, Canvas is also supported across browser, so it's not a, I mean, it's a valid choice. What are the performance The question was, what are the performance implications of using these things? Uh, so it depends on exactly which one of those you want to uh, you want to implement. Like you saw, if I run all of them at the same time, plus a lot of other sites, my uh, small puny MacBook will catch on fire. 
Um, but uh, I mean, these are totally doable. You don't like they even work on phones. It all depends on like the scope of your experience. If you're doing an insane physical computation, then obviously it will be harder than doing a simple thing. But it's not it's not something I would think about uh, to begin with. Only if like you're you're trying to make something insane and you know you need to make a proof of concept to see it works. None of these are so. Uh, so hard on performance that uh, I'd, I'd say that there is any problem with that. Cool. Uh, okay, we have one. Okay, so the question was if I have something to say about uh, virtual reality and 360 videos. I have a lot to say about that, but I don't have any more time. So we can talk about it uh, later. Uh, or you can follow me up on Twitter, where usually when I come across cool stuff that I did or someone else did, um, there's good information there. And that's cool, because I got to plug myself now without sounding too pretentious. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming in and listening. <laughs> Bum 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 b